Today, we're taking a historical look at the beginnings of aerial photography. Of course, now it's pretty easy to get started in aerial photography, but it used to be much harder to get pictures from above. The era of aerial photography began on October 13, 1860, when the first surviving aerial photo was taken from a hot air balloon above Boston by James Wallace Black at a height of 1,200 feet from a tethered balloon. Ever since, we've looked for new ways to get our cameras up in the air. One of the biggest appeals to drones is their ability to give us an elevated perspective of the world without the high cost associated with flying a helicopter or airplane. It's an amazing time. After that photo was taken of Boston from a hot air balloon, hot air balloon photography quickly gained the interest of the Union Army to spy on Confederate troops in 1862. Aerial photography continued to evolve with kites developed to hold cameras. The first person to take photographs from a kite was the British meteorologist E. D. Archibald, as early as 1882. He is credited with taking kite aerial photographs in 1887 by using a small explosive charge to release the camera shutter. And in 1890, Arthur Battit wrote the first book on aerial photography about his use of kite-supported cameras. In 1907, Germans started using pigeons to carry cameras, and the pigeon corps assisted Bavarian soldiers with intelligence collection. They didn't have much control over these early animal-based drones. Aerial photography grew leaps and bounds during World Wars I and II, driving a need for better quality photography equipment. Smaller and faster planes employed for surveillance meant that photographs needed to be taken at higher altitudes and at faster speeds. This meant needing faster film and faster mechanical shutter. By the mid-1940s, a suborbital rocket took a photo 65 miles from Earth. By the 1960s, we had a view of Earth from the moon. Things have come a long way from using balloons, kites, pigeons, airplanes, and rockets, up until now when we have a very large selection of small, relatively inexpensive drones that we can fly. We hope you've enjoyed this short video and will check out 107 School. Thank you, and always fly legal. You'd rather be flying your drone than studying anytime. It's your happy place. Now you don't need to leave your happy place. 107 School to Go allows you to study for your Part 107 Knowledge exam anywhere you choose. On Apple and Android, you can use our mobile apps to take 107 School wherever you go. Visit 107school.com to learn more and make sure you always fly legal.